This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and happy Chinese New Year, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pauline Shukmokjin, your host for Outside In. Now, today we're going to discuss the six sister city relationships China has with Honolulu with my guest, Jeffrey Lau. Hi, Jeff. Good afternoon, Pauline. Brilliant. Okay, now, we've got six sister cities we have to cover. That's and correct. And this is in honor of the new year of the Earth Dog. That's correct. And uh, we, we want to get to all of them in the time that we have. But very quickly, let's start off with a little bit about yourself. Oh, I'm a practicing attorney here in Honolulu, have been for the last 40 years. Uh, but uh, several years ago, I took an interest in uh, Chinese history and culture. And over the last 10 to 15 years now, I've been traveling to China anywhere from two to five or six times a year. Now, you're known as the Honorary Consul for Belgium, in addition to your legal work. That is correct. So how did you get involved with the management of these sister city relationships between China and Honolulu? Well, that's in a completely different category. The Belgian thing came from the country of Belgium. They wanted somebody that, was, that knew about their, their uh, country. And my father had served in the U.S. Armed Forces during the Battle of the Bulge there. Mm -hmm. Now, on the Chinese side, about... 20 years ago, my father decided that uh, the family was so in much interested in mainstream America that he thought we should all learn a little bit about Chinese culture. So all of a sudden in 1996, he said, that's it, I've had enough, we're all going to China. And we all looked at him <laughs> like, oh, what, are you crazy? Why are we doing this? Uh, but lo and behold, we went to the family villages after we toured some of the national monuments. And it shocked all of us to find out that the people there in uh, Toisan, which is now Taishan, mm -hmm. uh, the Siap district in southern China, right above Macau, right next to Jungsan, which is where all the Hawaii people are from, they all knew who we were, and we didn't know who they were. Mm. And looking up on the walls of these family homes, all of our pictures were there, our graduation oh. photos and all, and we didn't know anything about these people. Mm. So that started me on a Another lifelong journey to try to find out uh, about the, our relationships in China. After all, it's almost four generations uh, removed. Okay. Okay, let's start with sister city number one. We're going to cover them in chronological order that yes. they were made a sister city of Honolulu. So it's, we're going to Hainan Island now. Yes, and, Hainan Dao. Yes, and the specific city is Haiko. Yes, it is now Haiko. Originally, it was Hainan Dao which, when it was part of Guangdong province. But in 1986, a fellow classmate of mine from uh, Punahou, uh, Li Waidu, led a delegation there to create the very first sister city uh, in mainland China with, the, with Hawaii. And it was a time, just the whole island, now it's just the capital city of, uh, hai, of uh, Hainan. And the date of this is 1986, that, that the 1986, relationship? 1986, that okay. is correct. Uh, so this is the oldest of the sister cities. Right. And you also mentioned, when we were talking about this earlier, there is a resort city called Sanya. Oh, yes. And how is that? Is that close to Haiko? Is uh, that it's at the opposite end of the island. Actually, I believe uh, they have developed a relationship with the island of Kauai, mm -hmm. that county. But nonetheless, whenever the governor or the mayor of Honolulu goes to uh, uh, Hainan, typically we go to both uh, Haiko, the capital city, and then we take a bus trip or a rail trip down to Sanya, which is a really res uh, beautiful resort area, very much in the making of uh, Waikiki. Uh, mm. Well, that's what they copied anyway. Oh, right. One and of the hotels looks just like the Royal Hawaiian. Oh, I see. Yes. Why did they choose to copy Waikiki? Well, they were an outpost. In ancient times, Hainan was where the emperor kicked people out of the country that had violated laws just like beyond the edge of the Great Wall out in oh, the Xinjiang Desert. So you were sent Desert. into exile. You were yes. sent into exile there. So it was a barren land. Mm. And so when it became its own province, they said, what are we going to do? Uh, we can grow some crops, but we have all these lovely beaches uh, facing uh, uh, Vietnam and, and the Philippines. So they decided to d develop a resort tour 
uh, tourism. And so where did they copy? Hawaii. In fact, oh. if you look at the Hainan model, it looks just like the Hawaii H, except it's spelled with Hainan instead of oh, Hawaii okay. in a multicolored rainbow design. I imagine that's because people from Hainan or Haiko have visited Honolulu and they yes. found that to be the most picturesque way of creating a resort. Yes. One of my uncles actually started a series of management programs with uh, Communist Party leaders in China to come and visit the College of Business Administration here in Hawaii, and he started an exchange program uh, learning about Western management styles. And it all started from Hainan. Later on, uh, Lee Wai set up a series of legal seminars between the attorneys in uh, Guangdong province uh, and with Hawaii also. So we served uh, for a number of years in that capacity also. As far as you're aware, Jeff, is Sanya the only resort in all of China that has mimicked Waikiki successfully? They have done the most at mm. this time. Uh, clearly, the Hong Kong area and Macau would like to, but they don't have the beautiful beaches mm. that Hainan has. Mm. So has Joshan Island uh, near Ningbo across the bay uh, in Hangzhou Bay south of uh, Shanghai. And of course, another sister city way up north, the third one that we did, Chen Wandao actually talked to me about having uh, some of our large international architect firms come in to create a Waikiki of the North where all of the Russian tourists mm -hmm. and all of the Mongolian tourists and Northern Chinese come and visit, including Mao at the time. Huh. Okay, that's really interesting. So are a lot of the visitors to Sanya ch other Chinese from the other provinces? Because it's not something that's probably internationally known as a resort. Yes, uh, it's booming now as a wedding location mm. and a beauty contest location. Mm. Uh, the primary international tourists, though, are Russian. Believe right, it or okay. not, they're, right. they're sort of everywhere, aren't yeah, so, they? <laughs> yeah, right. So all the Italian foods, I mean, yeah. uh, Russian foods are are there, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're taking up a lot of the beach space right now. Yes, that's the same in the Mediterranean, in the French Riviera, and also in Cyprus. Yes, in Limassol. So um, yes. it's very interesting that very they've gone to very similar. Yes, yes. So let's move on to the second one. Okay. This and this is of particular closeness to Hawaii. Absolutely. This is Zhongshan. Yes. And this was 1986 as well. 1980. No, 19. 1997, 11 years later. 11 years later, uh, we yes. have a second sister yes. city. And this is important, Zhongshan, because a lot of the Hawaiians of Chinese ancestry came from this city. About 70% yes. of all the Chinese that uh, grew up in Hawaii come from the Zhongshan region of uh, China. Now, if you need an idea of where this is located, if you think of uh, Horseshoe with Hong Kong on the northern end, Macau on the southern end, and Guangzhou, Canton in the middle, uh, this would be above uh, Macau. Okay. And that's where most of the Chinese, because it's a water town or mm -hmm. near the ocean, they could see all of the Portuguese, American, British sailing ships going in, playing the waters between Guangzhou and the west. So many of them got on board and came to, uh, came to Hawaii. Now, it's funny because... They came a little later than the original Chinese, uh, the Toisan people, which is the next valley over mm. uh, toward the southwest of Macau. They all went to the United States, to the gold fields, to build the railroads, and as merchants to New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, uh, and Baltimore. So my family goes all the way back to those um, in Pennsylvania. Okay. But uh, nonetheless, uh, later, the next group came in from Zhongshan, and they happened to be coming just about the time the Asian Exclusion Acts went mm. into effect. Mm. So many of them were prevented from going to the U.S. mainland. So they decided to stay in Hawaii. And lo and behold, when Hawaii was annexed to the United States, they became U.S. citizens. That's right. Yeah. And so that's how fortunate they were uh, for all of us to be here today. Brilliant. So that's a particularly important one, that second relationship. Absolutely. Now let's move on to the third one. And this becomes a sister city in 2010. This is Qin Huangdao. Yes. And this has an interesting uh, relationship with Chinese history because there's a link to the first emperor of China. Yes. And as well as the last emperor or the Qing dynasty. That's correct. In China. Uh, when I, I became president of the Chinese chamber in 2010, it was the 99th to 100th year anniversary of the Chinese chamber. And I thought, well, we have two sister cities now in the south, Hainan, Hainan Dao, and Haikou, and also uh, Zhongshan, both of them in Cantonese in the mm -hmm. Hong Kong area. And I thought, I, wouldn't it be great for us to expand our reach across the country? 
So we looked for one of the northern cities, and it just so happened uh, the year before, 2009, one of our Narcissus princesses, mm -hmm. second princess, had run in a number of Chinese beauty pageants in China, ran in our local pageant, and came in second princess when she could hardly speak English at the time. Mm -hmm. But she was such a dynamic person mm -hmm. that we discussed the possibility of including her hometown way up north, a beach town, mm -hmm. right on the Bohai Sea, and that was Chin Wan Dao. And then I found out about the historical significance of that city. Mm. Two times in Chinese history, very, very important. The first was the Qin Dynasty, uh, the emperor that uni unified all of China. And he started the Great Wall coming out of the ocean uh, right there in Qin Wan Dao. Uh, so Lao Lung To is right there where the dragon com wall comes out of the water and cr transverses all the way across to the uh, Taklamakan Desert mm -hmm. in Xinjiang, all the way across China. That's where it began. And of course, he had that search for the magic elixir of life, mm -hmm. and he sent uh, 500 maidens and young men out to sea in search of that elixir. Uh, I guess they never found it. No, I guess Chin not. has not <laughs> <laughs> done much uh, since then. But the Chinese are very long living. Absolutely, and maybe yeah. that's where it comes from. <laughs> But many years later, uh, at the end of the Ming Dynasty, that location became famous again because that's where the first pass under heaven is. Mm -hmm. The Ming Dynasty had a wall there, a big fortress, and they, they, it was there to keep the, uh, the, um, the, Man, the Manchurians mm -hmm. out, uh, the, the, the Qing people. And uh, what happened was the general in charge, Wu Songli, he thought the Ming emperor was too interested in his wife, and he didn't like that. So when the, when the forces, when the Ming dynasty forces were arrayed on this, uh, at the first pass under heaven, they negotiated with the Qing coming in and let them through, and so that they could come all the way into China, fight the revolution that was going on in Beijing, and that's how the Qing Dynasty got started in China. Of course, the previous Ming Emperor, he hung himself on Coal Hill, That's right, yes, as yeah, you might know, yeah. and that started the Qing Dynasty in about 1400. Interestingly enough, Wu Sangui later on went all the way south to Yunnan and created a whole nother kingdom. The Yue, uh, he was part of the Yue Kingdom in uh, southern China, and he had his own kingdom. So that's a little bit of history. So now, when we decide to have this as a sister city, they had all of this historical perspective, mm -hmm. Bei Dai He, which was where all the resorts for the Europeans were located from Beijing. They would come, and then later the Communist Party took that over. You had uh, Shanghai Guan, the first pass under heaven, and Lao Lung To. So they had terrific tourist attractions. So they had contacted uh, myself and uh, at the time Peter Carlisle, the mayor, and said, hey, do you have anyone that can help us design a Waikiki project here up in the north? And we thought about it. We did talk to a number of architects. But the problem is their season is like the Northeast in New Jersey. You have a short summer season. And you couldn't do it all year round. Mm -hmm. But during that summer, it's packed with uh, Russian tourists and Korean tourists oh, so and others. The trains. Russians go there, too. <laughs> They're up in the north. It's, it's closer to them. It's much closer. Yes. It's much closer. <laughs> so that and became the third uh, sister city that uh, we have going well right now. And another beach as well. And another okay. beach project. Brilliant, yes. Jeff. Now we're going to just take a little quick break, and we'll be back and talk about the other three cities. Okay, just can't wait to have that Thanks. happen. <laughs> This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck, dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you, to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. 
We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, engineering, legislation with the local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Aloha and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're discussing the six sister city relationships China has with Honolulu. And we covered the first three, right, Jeff? That is correct. So we're going to cover the next three. But before we do that, there are two relevant organizations to the scheme of these sister cities Honolulu has with China. So do you want to explain those sure, two organizations? Sure, absolutely. The city and county of Honolulu started the International City Projects, uh, with, which is part of a national organization. Although we've kind of gone independent because you're only supposed to have one per country. Mm. And for the Philippines, Japan, Korea, and China, the city and county has more than one sister city in each. Uh, so as a result, we have a lot more relationships. Uh, in, from the Chinese side, there are two organizations that we deal with. One is CAIFC, which is the China Association for International Friendly Contacts. And that deals with like the Chinese Chamber and other um, nonprofit organizations that are not government. Uh, they are basically made up of senior government officials from China that have been on the international relations scene as ambassadors and uh, uh, consul generals around the world. And so they have the right uh, temperament to deal with Western organizations. So the Chinese Chamber works very closely with them, uh, bringing uh, uh, fighter aircraft back and forth, flying Tiger planes, uh, to our Pacific Aviation Museum and other things uh, along that line, and also exchange of students, uh, a lot of. Now, the other one is the Chinese um, Association of uh, uh, Friendly Contacts with uh, Foreign Countries, mm -hmm. FFC. And that is government to government more so. So that would be the city and county of Honolulu's program directly with the Chinese government, the ongoing government people, not the retired government mm. people. So those two organizations work closely together to create uh, lifelong relationships amongst the people and the states and the political entities and uh, with the rest of the world, really. Um, and so the key um, behind all of this is developing friendships among people so that there's a better understanding of each other and so that we're not always at political odds with one another. Yes, and a better understanding of each other's beach resorts. <laughs> uh, among others for Hawaii, Because everybody likes to go to the beach. Absolutely. Except, actually, most of the people who I know who live in Hawaii here, they don't really go to the beach because no. it's something you can do any time. Right, how and it is. we have to work hard to be able to afford to stay here. Yes, that's true, yes. Right, right. <laughs> now, uh, let's get to the other three sister cities. Yes. And uh, we're going to go to the world of the pandas. This is Chengdu, which is famous right. for the panda uh, reservation right. The Chinese there. Chamber of Commerce in Honolulu had a long interest in bringing a panda to our Honolulu Zoo, but the cost was just so prohibitive that, we, uh, that we've tailed away from that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we wanted to develop our ongoing relationship with them. And at one point, uh, Mayor Peter Carlisle uh, asked, tasked me with going to Chengdu to see if we could establish that relationship. It had started a few years earlier, but it was off and on, off and on. It's a long way inland. Mm. Uh, our first two, as you know, are in the south. Mm. The third one, Qingwandao, was in the north. And this is Sichuan province. This was the yeah. Sichuan yeah. province, the Shu Kingdom, way mm -hmm. at the interior of China, just at the foothills of the Himalaya mm -hmm. Mountains. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a far distance from any of our other uh, relationships. So we went out there, uh, set it up, and they said they had absolutely no problem with it. It's by far our largest sister city. Mm -hmm. uh, the population went from about 5 million to 10 to 12. And now if you include the environs, about 15 million people. When Chongqing, the former capital, broke away to its own semi-autonomous region. That mm -hmm. has 35 million people. We don't have a sister city relationship. We stay with Chengdu the original capital of the Shu Kingdom. And did you get to hold a panda when you went oh, there? Oh, yes, or? yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody uh, who's, I'm so jealous because it's not so easy to do nowadays. Yeah. Uh, before you had to make an application, it was fairly straightforward, but now everybody wants to do it. Now so. you can't do it, yeah, actually. It's just been yeah. banned recently oh, because the pity. pandas were getting um, human diseases. Oh, disgusting. And so they kept trying <laughs> to open it back up, and then the pandas would get infected, and then they would have to shut it down. 
And the money that you pay to do this was really going for panda-based research mm. uh, for the breeding of pandas. And now they have a surplus uh, within the mm. confines. Because of, they have a general problem breeding. Uh, right. Uh, um, in the wild, they move so uh, slowly and they don't live in pairs. Mm. So even finding a mate in the wild is very, very difficult for them. But the last couple of years, they've had 20, 24 pandas a mm. year born. That's pretty good. And so now they're trying to lease them out to all of the uh, zoos around the world. <laughs> but still, Hawaii cannot afford the price. Would it be, I mean, I, I'm, this is not my area, but it's got an awful lot of fur, doesn't it? So it'd be in a special condition at the zoo. Oh, yes. It's quite hot you, here. you pretty yeah. much need an air conditioned facility, although in parts of their environment, it can get warm. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty tough because of all that fur and mm. padding. They can fall and they can still run pretty quick. <laughs> But they only eat arrow bamboo, and that's, that's right. the real issue. Uh, if you bring pandas to Hawaii, you probably need a semi-air conditioned facility, mm. half indoors, half outside, and you'd need a research base to study whether the bamboo that we have here might be edible by those by the animals. That's the sort of facility. I, I saw the two pandas that are held in Hong Kong in the Ocean yes. Park. Yes, Ocean Park. And everybody was taking, it was hilarious because everybody's taking photographs of them and it, there's this panda just sleeping with its legs up in the air. Right. And they had a little chart of its daily activities. Right. And it was basically 85% eating, uh, sleeping, and, <laughs> doing nothing. Right, yes. right. Yeah, so that's a beautiful facility they have there. What they do in, at Ocean Park is they have mm. video cameras so mm. you can see them closer. Yeah. But if you go to Chengdu and you go to the panda breeding base, you're this close to the baby oh. pandas behind the glass. Yeah, I heard about friends of mine who yeah. are Chinese, they got to hold one and yes. they said once you hold one, you don't want to let go of it. Yes. So the little uh, baby ones. And there's also another surrogate called the red panda, which is like a big raccoon, mm. but really, really cute animal, very light. And at one point, we were able to carry those also, and they're uh, super cute. But also. they were getting the same human diseases as well? Yes, okay, uh, that's same been problem. a problem. Okay, so leaving the pandas uh, aside, let's go to the fifth sister. Oh, well, let, me, let me say one, oh, oh, yeah. a few more things about Chengdu. It's the largest sister city. Yep. They ha mm -hmm. They're very dynamic. Foxconn and their iPhones and iPads are all now being built in Chengdu. It's a booming area. And it's, uh, it's going to be one of the big economic engines in China besides Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou. Oh, wonderful. So yeah. It is quite very, sophisticated, Chen Zhu. Right. Yeah, so. We're very fortunate to have them as a sister city relationship. And speaking of sophistication, mm, I love Shanghai. This is oh, my yes. favorite city out of the ones it's I've an seen. I haven't seen enough. City. Yeah, it yes. is a beautiful city, uh, sometimes called the Paris of the Far East That's correct. in the olden times. And we do have a relationship, but it's not with specifically Shanghai, it's Fengxian District. Fengxian yeah, is Fengxian. a suburban district way to the south at the end of the rail line, right on the uh, Hangzhou Bay, mm -hmm. the mouth of Hangzhou Bay. Uh, they, they asked to develop a relationship which was established uh, about 20, 2013 mm -hmm. or so. So we, we uh, Peter Carlisle and I went there to visit uh, to help uh, establish it and uh, it's ongoing. I think presently uh, the Office of Economic Development, Ed Hawkins, mm -hmm. uh, is planning a trip there uh, shortly to further the development of the relationships uh, for Honolulu in that area. Okay, so Fengxian is 2013, and we didn't mention Chengdu is 2011. 2011, and right. And I, I'm a wood rabbit in the ah, astrological cycle, so 2011 yes. was a rabbit year, yes. too. And Very successful year for yeah. Chengdu and Honolulu. Yes, that's a rabbit is the luckiest sign, right. so that was auspicious. We've probably had, uh, next to, uh, ne next to uh, Jungsan, uh, the Chengdu relationship is the next most busiest. Mm -hmm. Right now, every summer we participate in the Chengdu International Youth Music Festival, mm -hmm. where their 30 sister cities come from all around the world, from Russia, Belgium, Germany, Iceland, South America, Africa, and we all meet in Chengdu and play music for four straight days. Wow. And it's a tremendous exchange for, this ch for the Chinese high school and college students to meet foreigners from all around the world. So we really love going there. This will be my eighth year uh, attending uh, that event with, last year I took Miss Hawaii and oh, okay. Miss Hawaii USA. Oh, brilliant. And so they've just had a wonderful time there oh. in Chengdu. And finally, uh, last but not least, is Zhangzhou. Yes. And this is the most recent, yes. recently made sister city. And when was this? Uh, uh, that was the following year, uh, 2014. 2014. Uh, the deal was I would go with Peter Carlisle to Feng Shen if he would go with me to Zhangzhou. And uh, another president of the Chinese chamber took his Narcissus tour there. 
uh, Leonard Cam and to establish that relationship. I actually signed uh, some of the documents and, and Peter Carlyle did. And this is because Zhangzhou is the, known as the Narcissus City. That is it correct. It doesn't mean they're full of narcissists. It means it's known <laughs> for the flower. You want to clarify that? I uh. knew you would get, go there. <laughs> yes, the Narcissus flower in, in Chinese tradition represents prosperity, mm -hmm. goodwill, and a, a beautiful uh, incoming year. And so after the Korean War, when everyone was down here in Hawaii, uh, World War II had ended, the Korean War was wrapping up, uh, we wanted to do something in our Chinese community here. So the Chinese Chamber uh, at the time created the Narcissus Festival using the daffodil, which is a mm -hmm. Narcissus flower, mm -hmm. as its uh, crowning glory for beauty. And they had a beauty contest called the Narcissus Contest. And that now is in its 67th or 68th yes. year. We have quite a few such festivals in Hawaii, that, yes. like the Cherry Blossom Festival for the Japanese. But, very, but the Narcissus much. Festival is the oldest. It, it is the oldest one. Uh, it's the most prominent one. We send uh, our girls, to uh, our young women, to China on a tour. And they also participate uh, in many instances uh, for a number of years in the Miss Chinatown USA pageant. Now that's being run by the Chinatown Merchants, I believe, mm -hmm. a, a different organization because they were so busy. So some of them will run in that pageant also uh, in San Francisco. Okay, so these are the six sister city relationships we have between China and Honolulu, but we also have, like the Japanese, with the Japanese we have Kyushu as a sister state mm -hmm. with Hawaii. Mm -hmm. We do have Guangdong yes. as the sister yes. state of Hawaii. Yes, I, I can talk about that. I remember uh, Linda Lingo going there twice. Uh, she invited uh, the Chinese chamber to go with her on her second trip. And so we were delighted to take her there, I think in 2008 or 2009, mm -hmm. uh, for the 30th anniversary of Guangdong's sister state projects around the world. It was a global event. Uh, and it was a wonderful time at the White Swan Hotel uh, in Guangzhou. Uh, the mayor actually came up to me and said, hey, next year Guangzhou, the city, will have its 25th sister city relationship with uh, Honolulu mm. and so he wanted to know if we would come and Linda, uh, Governor Lingo immediately said, Jeff, we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> and so she accompanied me uh, the following year and it was happened to be my year as president of the chamber and we also attended the um, Shanghai International oh, yes. Exposition. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it was just a wonderful year. We signed the Ching Dao documents also mm -hmm. at that same time and it was really a highlight time for Hawaii relationships with China. Okay. We continue to expand on that even today. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you so much for explaining each of these relationships uh, for our audience. My pleasure. And um, we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday on Outside In at 2 p.m. All Aloha. right. Aloha. Bye-bye.